Welcome back, one and all, to another edition of Off the Record. See, I'm impressed. We, we went a couple episodes with Mamba not laughing at my intro, but we're back and better than ever. He's laughing. He's hooting. He's hollering. What, why the change today, Mamba? Do I just look I, extra dumb to you today? Yeah, I mean, there's that. But then, you know, like, so we got uh, Carson. Carson's goofy anyway, so it's fine, right? But we got a very professional KB in the house with mm-hmm. us. And I know she's just like, what did I sign up for? Like, mm. like I, I love these guys, but I don't You're know what I'm it. doing here. Man, welcome to the show. Yes. I'm super excited to be here, and I, I don't feel that way at all. I'm, I'm happy that I'm on a laid back racing show, honestly. And okay. it's good to see you, Carson. Uh, normally, it's I'm interviewing you from the studio, so this is nice to see you on Zoom for once. Yeah, I'm glad I'm at home so I can relax and I have a sweatshirt on and I don't have to all professional and this and that. Uh, it's ever professional with Mamba around for sure though. No, it's not. You're hey, welcome. Carson, at least you get to actually, um, you can actually see Caitlin because at the Chili Bowl, apparently you just ghosted her. Rude. Oh, that was messed up. <laughs> I did. It's okay, no hard feelings. I think you just didn't I didn't saying hi. A hi would have been a lot more noticeable than a, a wave. You know, there's a myth. I did say hey and with a wave, but I mean, you were kind of focused. I know it was your first chili bowl, so mm. you were a little bit. I was overwhelmed. We'll say that. <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> That's fair. It is sensory overload when you get into that building. Like when I first walked in, I was like, uh, I need to find someone I know. I'm not used to going to the racetrack and not like feeling like I know everybody. So like I had to find a safe zone and then slowly like make my way around to everybody. Yeah. That's probably I, a good I, place I to really, start. Go ahead, Carson. Uh, I was really glad I was parked around. I had Larson on one side, Chad both the other and Bowman was like two down a Claus and Marshall across from me. So I didn't have to like venture out too far and brain yeah. was only like three pits. So I was like in, top level country that i didn't belong being in but uh <laughs> i'm glad i'm around a lot of pavement guys or at least around some dirt guys happen to know and mambo was you know one time in my pit area and he didn't even realize he was in my pit so i had to like grab him by the back no but, idea no idea i literally so i literally go i say carson i said what are you doing here like do you know what you're doing and he looks at me and he just smiles and he says I just gas it, and that's all I know, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> I mean, that, that's all they say it takes. The, the more gas, the faster you go. I took it and ran with it. So it's true. You can confirm. I can confirm. It, it works for sure. I didn't gas it enough to run the cushion the way it was, but there are a lot of people that were messing up and flipping off the cushion, and I didn't do that. So I was okay. – I, 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 Tear up a single thing besides the motor. I watched an interview with you, and I thought your analogy was funny. You said it's like showing up to the Super Bowl and learning how to throw the football for the first time. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what it was. Um, so I was figuring out how to start the car on the ramp for hot laps. Wow. Yeah. While, meanwhile, in my heat is Sammy Swindell, uh, Chant from Corey Day and some other Keith Coons car and I'm like this is what I got thrown in the fire nothing like being just thrown into the fire right yeah Sammy oh. cracked and then I just blocked from starting on front row and locked into second and then I slowly figured it out from there but um, the heat heat race I was definitely I've never been so nervous leading a race that I was just panicking the whole time so, Carson, I know it was your first time participating in the Chili Bowl. Was it your first time there, period, or had you been before? I've been to the shootout twice, like okay. three years ago, but that was the first time for the Chili Bowl, and I stayed every night. Like, I went – I watched from hot laps to feature every single night, and I think I, I in total I got 45 laps all week, and I was there from Sunday to Sunday. Man. Nice. That's what you get. Mamba, I know it was your first time there. Was it everything that it was advertised and then some? Um, I Okay, so yes and no. Uh, I should have got there Wednesday. I should have got there Wednesday. What did you say, Carson? You, talking you, probably, you probably don't remember half of it from the night. 
escapades. He won a lot of money. Uh, I okay, so you know, yeah, like we 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 had a good time. Uh, we sold some steering wheels. We saw some saw some MPI customers. Thanked them for for repping. Uh, Schaefer put the Keith Coons MPI car in a good spot, so that was cool to watch. Um, I didn't I didn't make it over to the Rowdies area. Um, no. I, I know that's really disappointing. I, said when, you were gonna. I, I know, but like I got there, I got there Thursday. I needed to get there Wednesday because I was very out of my element when I got there. Mm. So then once I figured out where I needed to be and who, because like day one, I was hanging out with like uh, Josh Jones and uh, Justin Marks. And so we were kind of buzzing around. And, and then so I'm like, okay, I'm comfortable now. And then we only had one more day. Right. So then that night, Chase Briscoe, my new Chili Bowl car owner, he sponsored me 200 bucks and I won him 3,500. So, you know, he didn't make the show, but we still won the money. So it's, uh-huh. it's, it was a good day. It was a good weekend. And then, and then I got to hang out with KB for a little while. That's I right. literally haven't seen Caitlin in person in probably uh, like three years at least. So that was cool. It was cool. I That was my first or uh, fourth time going to the Chili Bowl. I had to miss it last year because I was super pregnant. But um, I love going to it. I think it's a lot of fun. My husband's family runs a team. They run cars every single year. So I kind of get to see up close all the stuff that they do and the effort and preparation and a lot goes into it. But going to the Chili Bowl almost like reminds me of being in a casino where you're like, you don't know what time it is. You don't know if it's daylight out anymore or if it's dark. Like people are partying. There's just like all kinds of shenanigans going on. It's a week long party with racing almost 24 hours because it opens really early in the morning and you're there till like 11 30 sometimes later at night watching the races it's just it is a it's a long like i have to mentally prepare myself for the week of chili bowl of how many things are going to be happening and how late i am be staying up i like eat like crap the whole time i'm there but it's a lot of fun <laughs> i we just saw oh davy's back he disappeared he came back yeah i don't know what so, to do. my camera's messed up so so i think the chili bowl that caught the thing about it that caught me off guard was like okay i'm like oh it's chili bowl it's the biggest dirt race of the year like it's gonna be you know this big production and like kind of buttoned up and stuff false false yeah. it is it is just as much like any other local short track race with sure. just more people and then people have their stackers right there's a tv like towards the racetrack and then the one towards the back of the building you can just post up on the top of your trailer and you just sit there and drink and you watch the TV from, and it's, it's great. It was, dude, it's so cool. I don't know how we get that on asphalt racing. Like, I don't know how we, how we can get some of that energy and some of that environment. Uh, Snowball Derby kind of has some of that, but it was, it was just a super cool event. I love that. I mean, had a sofa all week on top of their, <laughs> and they would just lay out and there'd be like eight of them on a, L couch, L shaped couch, just watching the race all day. I love it. The L shaped couch was inflatable, and it, it got a <laughs> hole in it. <laughs> you should outies though. You missed out Saturday during the, um, I think it was the flag parade. So we all have our state flags, and all the drivers walked around to turn two for the rowdies, and there were shoes flying, frisbees flying, air horns, inflatable stuff. <laughs> Stop! Uh, Stop! Buffalo Bill style. The last time I remember seeing it, like it was like a full blown rodeo, and there's you know Bowman's throwing stuff like professional, you know, buttoned up guys just having a ball, and I think I saw two state flags get thrown to the rowdies, and the rowdies are now from Massachusetts or whatever because somebody threw the Massachusetts. <laughs> That's funny. It's kind of like a Talladega Boulevard. Like you don't know what you're going to yeah. see. Just anything goes, but it's a lot of fun. Everybody should go experience it. I think at least. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Every time that I talk to people about their first experience at the Chili Bowl or driving in it, just being in Tulsa in general, the vibe of it, it always makes me regret not booking a flight down there or not going to the Chili Bowl for the first time because I've heard about it more fr- more frequently for the last few years. We're seeing more NASCAR participation in that event this year, more than any other year. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come right back and talk about that, specifically your experience, Carson, 
because it's not normal to go to the Super Bowl and learn how to throw a football, but you did exactly that. So stick around. We'll be right back on Off the Record. Welcome back to Off the Record. Mama's getting loose. Carson's loose. KB's loose. We were just talking in the uh, in the off air show about the J Main, the prestigious J Main that Carson made it to. In the, the biggest Chile main, game. honestly. If you don't make the J Main, you really didn't yeah. do it. What I mean, yeah. Mean? <laughs> we all love some alphabet soup, and we know that J is the superior letter. So, Carson, please take us through your J Main and the experience of it. I mean, the J Main twenty four hours has nothing on the Rolex twenty four. Like if <laughs> comparison, uh, I think it feature of the weekend so and it was i started ninth and i and i finished second as one car so it was non caution 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 and they just kept crashing i, I don't i don't know why and then like that tucker clausmeyer who was running through the soup kept passing cars and then they'd have to throw the yellow and give it back and the race receiver lady was getting more mad at us. And, and she started yelling at us and then started apologizing to Tucker because Tucker just had to keep going back spot. <laughs> and look, they can't figure it out. We haven't completed a lap. I'm sorry, Tucker. <laughs> like <laughs> I want it. So so you so you had your great, this was your great, you know, your main, you had your moment. What's it like, Caitlin? watching your you know your husband's family compete in this event i was down there you guys had a bunch of cars over there right yeah. so your your perspective was a little different what was that like well they ended up making it to the b main and matt cheryl only missed the a main i think by three places so that was obviously a, a disappointment but they had a really good uh chili bowl overall i mean making the b main is hard i mean like what carson just talked about if you have a setback early in the week it is a really long week trying to overcome uh like your if you have a bad qualifying night and stuff like that so they're pretty intense like it, it wasn't as laid back maybe over where we were because you know they're they're every season they take it really serious they want to have a good showing they put a lot of effort into this so I, I was happy for them though, because I felt like they had one of their best years they've had uh, in quite a while at the Chili Bowl. So good for them for making it to the B main. It's hard though. I, I would not want to, I would not want to race that. Like listening to you talking about it, Carson, it just seems very stressful. And like, you just don't have a lot of time to make up if a mistake happens. Well, see for me, like there was no pressure. Like I'm not looking for a world outlaw ride. And you know, this is my big shot, big opportunity. I'm just there to just drive a midget. And Al Nice put me in it uh, just because he, he asked if I had a chili bowl ride. And I'm like, oh, I've never ran it. Um, so I was playing with almost house money, and I've never done this before. So there was literally zero expectations. And uh, I broke a rocker arm on my prelim night. Otherwise, I probably would have had a good good shot at making the a uh which was my only goal was to make a qualifier and try and make the a on my prelim night um, but yeah it was, it was so fun and i must have done halfway decent because there was a lot of people at media day that i've never talked to before and they brought up how good i ran or how shocked i was or asked about it or asked how it fit in the, even in the midget it goes back to the stars of jay main like I was in there for way too long. I started getting angry because I, it was too tight to be in there that long for me. So I was ready to get a break. <laughs> okay. So I have a question about you competing in the event in general, though, because like, like we said before the break, a lot of NASCAR talent is flocking to Tulsa in January to run the Chili Bowl. You have never run in a midget up until this point. You're learning on the fly. Your team owner wants to put you in this car. Do you know why he wanted to do that? Was it to gain experience? Was it just to see a new event in general? Did you have any interest in competing in it before Al came to you with the opportunity? Because like I said, there's a lot of your counterparts in the truck series and also in Xfinity and Cup that really look forward to this event all throughout the year, even when they're racing in NASCAR and it's become a marquee event on the racing calendar. Yeah, I mean... I mean, everybody knows the Chili Bowl, and Al Nice loves dirt racing, and 
you know, when he was looking to start Nice Motorsports, it was either going to be a World Outlaw late model team or it was going to be a NASCAR truck team. Mm-hmm. And they took the truck route because they could more financially rewarding if they win races versus World Outlaws. Um, you know, World Outlaws is paying a lot more money now, so he's probably wishing he went that route now. But <laughs> Uh, but no, it's, he, he's always had, uh, you know, background and wanting to still kind of have something in dirt and he's helped Moffitt and I think that Mark Smith or whatever. Um, so when we kind of brought up the chili bowl, uh, I said, I've always wanted to drive a dirt midget, let alone the chili bowl. And that's why I was almost more excited. Monday was on hot laps was I just get to drive the midget, let alone the chili bowl, you know, worry about that prelim night um but i was i was all pumped up and i loved dirt racing and always wanted to do it just i've never really had that shot because you know i, I want to go the nascar route uh and, and and pursue that and that's my dream but you know if i can run dirt on the side i'd love to do that uh caitlin you're you're as i like to call a grinder Right. You, you come up from the from, that's the first time I've used it this time, Davey. OK, I usually use it about five. So I need to get it. Oh, look at the pub. Nice. Um, so like you, you've been around the short tracks and, and you understand how important like short track racing is to to the community and to motorsports. For you to see these guys start to come back, even on like Snowball Derby, right? Eric Jones, Ryan Priest, they just built cars. Like how important can you emphasize how important that is for these guys to reach back to the community? I think it's super important. I mean, I think back to when Chase Elliott won the championship and that off season, we saw him run snowball derby. He ran the chili bowl for the first time uh, this off season. He did some of the rally cross racing. So I think it's like twofold, right? Drivers are learning that it's beneficial to them to have experience in other racing divisions because it makes them sharper for their main craft of cup racing or whatever it is, truck racing, whatever it is. But also it's just a good opportunity to bring things full circle in the sport. You know, the grassroots short track level is where I started my career and I kind of saw a lot of our big stars now coming through in the Canon series, Bubba Wallace, Chase, all of them came through Langley Speedway where I worked as a reporter for a couple of years. And you see it come full circle when these guys make it to the top level. But those people at that smaller level, they're never going to forget you know, those racers and kind of their culture and their environment they have at their particular track. So when the big stars come back, it just elevates their whole program even more. You know, it gets the fans more excited. It's a really cool opportunity, I think, for the drivers to be reminded of where they came from a little bit. And uh, we've just been seeing a lot of them doing it more and more. Kyle Busch going out to Tulsa for the shootout, I thought was awesome. Yeah. Uh, he love it, love or hate the guy generated a lot of excitement right out of the gate because he was crushing it in his heat race, I think. But he admitted that he had a little bit of a learning curve later on. But that was cool to see. And I think we're just starting to see more and more drivers um, taking the time to do other forms of racing uh, in the off season because they realize the importance, obviously, for the sport as a whole to continue growing it. But also it's good for them to just um, sharp and still get that experience. I'm, I'm curious as to why you think it is now, Caitlin, because we've seen in the past 10 years or so that the boom of short track racing and the participation in it from the top guys in NASCAR has grown exponentially. But I can't really think, you know, past, let's use 2013 as an example. I don't remember hearing about a lot of cup drivers, Xfinity truck series drivers going down to the snowball derby, competing in the chili bowl. And I don't know if that was necessarily a coverage thing or if it was just the drivers didn't go and that that was not a priority for them. Well, I mean, I think, I don't really know what the reason is either, but you notice around a lot of these bigger marquee events, there's a ton of traction on social media. They do have obviously some broadcast coverage for chili bowl and you're seeing the great time that everybody's having, you know, the drivers who have done it, I think everyone else is watching and saying, Hey, that looks actually like a pretty good time. Like something I want to go experiment and try myself. Uh, And I'm sure there's probably been some initiatives behind the scenes uh, with NASCAR wanting the drivers to have more involvement on some of the lower grassroots level of racing or attending some of the other marquee events. To your point, I think we have seen a lot of team owners kind of pulling the reins back where at one point they were trying 
to keep drivers from, you know, doing some of these other racing divisions from a safety perspective and mm-hmm. also just making sure that cup was their primary focus. Kyle Larson has been the biggest proponent, I think, of racing other divisions. And my God, look at yep. look at the talent that he is. You know that it's all connected. The time that he spends in the other series, he has said that more or less how much it helps him for cup racing. So uh, I don't know why we've seen a surgence in the last couple of years. I think just, again, a lot of these events are becoming more and more popular. There's more media around them. There's more social media posting about them. So it's kind of opened the door for other people to see, hey, like we want to go and try this as well. I mean, Carson, you can probably speak to this better because you obviously did the Chili Bowl for the first time this year. Yeah, I think it's it's a combination of things. I, I don't I don't think you could just name one. And I kind of wondered the same thing. Like you you notice like when there's 98 rookies at the Chili Bowl. Like you know, wonder what's changed. And I think it's a lot of you know. I think Flow Sports is it's a big component of it. You know, I think it. You know, I know. We see it all the time on all Larson, you know, dirt stuff. And I think dirt race. Yikes. You're back. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> dirt racing is gaining a lot of uh, exposure, more money around it, which, um, you know, opens more, more opportunities for big names to come in and, uh, have that and you know with Kyle Busch you know with Braxton you know now they get to race together on dirt side a little bit and everybody wants to be a part of the Chili Bowl but uh, you know I think Larson for sure is it, it's kind of the whole monkey see monkey do in racing you know he runs 700 races a year you know everybody's trying to cop you know he's making them all look foolish on Sunday let's throw to a quick break we'll come back the clash at the Coliseum it's coming up I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, let's get these guys' take. What do we think is going to happen in LA? Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Off the Record. Davey Siegel, chilling with my homies, Mamba Smith, Caitlin Vinci, and, of course, Carson Hosevar. He's not wearing a cool hat this episode, but I don't know. I, I can't help but feel a little bit slighted that you didn't put on a, an exciting hat for us. I guess we're not worth it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just worked out, so I was all sweaty, and I didn't want to get my hats all Excuse. sweaty. All right. People's kids. Subject change. Let's clash at the Coliseum. Uh, as of this recording, we are approximately two or so weeks away from a historic event in NASCAR. We are racing inside of an arena, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. I booked my flights a couple days ago. I am super amped to be there on the ground. Uh, Let's start off with the driver here first. That being Carson Mamba. God bless you. Uh, I'm not a driver. I just hang out. I don't know. Yeah, I know. So Carson, as a driver, what would your reaction be if you got told or voluntold, hey, we're going to race inside of a Coliseum. It's going to be a quarter mile boring like Bowman Gray. What would your reaction be? Uh, I mean, why not? Like, I mean, everybody wants the clash to you know, be a short track and, and drive into each other. I mean, shoot, they all crashed every single lap on the super speedway. So yeah. gonna, they might as well do it at a short track. They did it on the road course too. Yeah, that too. So I, I'm pumped for a short track. I, I didn't like the road course, honestly. I wasn't a fan of it just because there weren't enough cars and it got too spread out-ish. I mean, it was a decent race up front, but mm-hmm. uh, I just want to see like just bumper to bumper I've always wanted to see what it, it was like if it was on Bowman Gray. So uh, I, if this is the closest we can get, I, I'll, I'm all for it. Caitlin, obviously Fox had a big part in making this event happen. When did you first catch wind that this was going to be a legit possibility? And then once it kind of came to reality, what was your reaction? Uh, I guess I first heard months ago. I don't know specifically when it was because obviously the conversations have been taking place Right. For a while, there's been so much preparation into building this thing. It's actually pretty remarkable that they've been able to put it together and, and construct it in a few months' time. So uh, quick. I, I'm game for anything that's new. You know, I, I will try anything once <laughs> with some limitations. Um, but I think that that is what makes this really cool is that we don't know what it's going to be, right? So everyone's going to be watching just to see what this could produce. And I think that I commend NASCAR, I commend 
Fox and all the, the people involved in trying something different. Uh, again, it's an iconic venue. It's a new market with Los Angeles, which I think is really neat. Uh, I love the format, the heat racing, the LCQ. Obviously, that's something that we see in other forms of racing. It reminds me a little bit of Supercross when I covered that. Just having a new format as well may, adds a little bit more intrigue, I think. And the biggest thing is just which teams are going to figure it out. I mean, I, I think that most people will be tuning in just for the one of the main reasons of what will this be like? You know, and Ben Kennedy has alluded, uh, if this goes well, could potentially be a points race in 2023. So I hope it goes well. It's a, it's a big experiment, but I, I have very, very high hopes, high expectations for it. I got a bone to pick. I got a bone oh to pick. Strap in. With people strap in. Cause I've heard a lot. I mean, a lot of people have been talking a lot of smack about this race, right? Like, oh, why don't we just go to Bowman Gray? Okay, I hear you, right? We've taken the K&N cars there and the modified dresser all the time, and it's awesome. But it's not just the racetrack. It's not just the venue. We're going to be going there at the same place the Super Bowl's at, same place the Olympics are at, in the same time frame. This, this is like, this never happens. So, like, there's levels to this stuff where my point is, is if we can get three, right three of these celebrities high name celebrities that come out and that are part of the whole week to be like man i really enjoy this i want to come back and do do more of this i want to be involved more that's worth every bit of the millions of dollars that we're spending like even if it's just one even if it's a bunch of lo- like b listers i don't care i just want more people that have more ability to bring more resources to motorsports because it's the best sport in the country, in the world, if you ask me. And people just don't want to know more about it, right? We got MJ, we got Pitbull, Ice Cube is doing an in con oh, in yeah. concert. Can't wait for like, that. Like, listen, it we got this stuff going on. Everybody that's like, well, why don't we just go to Boom and Great? I need you to temper it because yeah. you don't understand. Yeah. You yeah. don't understand the business side of this. It, it you can't just make stuff happen. Yeah. Like, yeah, we could go, right? But does that mean? You know, Nike's gonna start sponsoring a billboard there. Like, no, no Nike buzz. Neither is Carhartt. You know what I mean? Like, the, we need the hype. Like, it's buzz for us because we're already in it. But like, this could be buzz for new people. I think that's important. Yeah. To Mamba's point, there's a lot of layers to this. There's a reason they pick that venue, that city, that time of you know in the month. All the things. There's different mo- motives, right, for this race, which I think you were just talking about it, all kind of the anticipation and excitement and buzz around it. Uh, Not saying that we wouldn't have that at other venues necessarily, Bowman Gray or whatnot, but I think this one in particular, uh, it has a lot to offer people and fans, and it's going to be very unique for a lot of those reasons. Yeah. And 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 my last point is too, like this works, right? Say this works. Well, there's stadiums that are empty that are in pretty high markets. There's stadiums that, you know, football stadiums only run eight games a year. They need, like if we can throw this up in a few months and it's out of their season and like mid mid year, we can run some races that you imagine running a couple of short track races in the middle of the Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, like because you can, like yes. that would be freaking cool if you can figure out how to do that for a, a season mm-hmm. of time. That's cool and it, it could be very worth it for everybody. Good crossover. So. There's yeah. been some experiments, I feel like, over the years of things that people at first were like, whoa, is that really going to work? You know, Charlotte, a Roval. There was so much that went into that race. People were like, oh, I don't know if this is really going to be a thing. It was sold out event. It's created one of the best road course races, in my opinion, on the circuit. Bristol Dirt. People are like, how's yeah. that going to happen? Obviously, the weather was a factor. But once the weather cleared out, we saw the race for the Cup Series, especially. I was like, man. This, this brings fun. back so many memories, so much nostalgia. And I think that was also a motivator for Fox when they had the Field of Dreams baseball game. It was a huge event. People loved it and loved reliving that time of, from that film and mm-hmm. seeing a baseball game in that environment, which got them thinking more about racing and what can we do that could emulate something like that and, and, and just really create a new uh, experience for the fans. And that's sort of, I think, how the genesis of this came about. Yeah, this has been something that NASCAR has been way more receptive to as a sanctioning body in congruence with the networks like Fox pushing for the dirt race and getting the clash at the Coliseum. So I think it's been a really good harmonious relationship from that standpoint. I'm curious, Carson, from your from your perspective, 
you're a child, right? You're less than 20 years old. So what you don't know is kind of what you don't know. But Caitlin, Mamba, myself, we've seen NASCAR be historically a little reluctant to change, especially when it comes to the schedule. You know, five, 10 years ago, putting a race at a non-NASCAR or SMI owned track would have been blasphemy. Never would have happened. And we have multiple yeah. races on the schedule that are doing that now. Um, going to race inside of a Coliseum, you are crazy. That does not happen. And it's happening now. So to be involved in the sport, be one of the up and coming drivers, and now you're competing in good equipment at these venues, it's got to feel pretty cool for you to actually be racing on Bristol dirt, to be knowing that, you know, maybe one day you will also race inside of the LA Coliseum, because before your time, and again, you're a child, none of this was even a realistic possibility, but now you're living through it and you're seeing how NASCAR is being more adaptive to the times. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool for, for sure. I mean, Bristol dirt, I mean, it was, I think first practice was maybe cooler than the race just because of, you know, all the cup guys getting out and actually, you know, enjoying just driving a race car, even if they were 30th on the board, you know, yeah. it, it was cool to see everybody down pit road. Um, you, you know, all the crew guys, you know, all the crew chiefs, you know, either bring a dirt street stock guy that they had as a buddy that, you know, they were getting set up help from, um, I ran Arca, you know, that's what we did. Yeah. My crew chief became a street stock guy. So, uh, it was cool to see everybody out of their comfort zone and in a, in a world of, you know, technology and SIM and data, whatever the data says is what's going to work and it's going to be fast. You know, all that was out the window. It was just, you know, driver talent of, you know, Christopher Bell, Larson were two of the best. Uh, and then crashed each other or got involved in something. So it was cool to see everybody out of their comfort zone and, um, you know, try and reinvent, you know, there was a bunch of people with a bunch of rake or, you know, left side was all the way up. And then all of a sudden everybody, you know, left front down, right rear up, you know, every car looked a lot different and, and all of them, you know, had different ways of being fast in different sections. And, you know, car came to them after a hundred laps or 50 laps, you know. Carson, I know you're a one from the north, Michigan boy. What about like ice racing? The Euro Series is experimenting with that. Have you ever done that? Is that something that interests you? I know we're getting crazy, crazy, but why not? I've never heard of it, and I've never seen it. I think there, there's a race that I know of, and it's snow racing, and it's four bangers enduro. And I think that should be the clash one year. That would be cool. Like or like at a cool. Fox off season, like. <laughs> They take every driver out or a handful of drivers out and they just, you know, enduro and, you know, anybody can bring their car. I think that you get 600 cars if you tell them 10 cup guys are going to be involved in it, you know. You Kill sell it on steroids. Yeah, exactly. Freeze where you are because we're taking one more break. Coming back, let's talk about some Hall of Famers that were inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame this past week. Enshrined forever, as they say. We'll be right back on Off the Record. Welcome back to Off the Record. So we had the NASCAR Hall of Fame induction ceremony this year in 2022 for the class of 2021. It's kind of confusing, but that's what happens yeah. when you're living in a pandemic. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is in. Red Farmer is in. The late, great Mike Stefanik is in. Mamba, you are our Northeast resident. Uh, I love Julie Stefanik's ode to her late husband, Mike. At the end of her speech, she had a little Jack and Diet. She raised it to good old Mike. That was great to see, wasn't it? Yeah, no, like Mike Stefanik for people in New England was like, he's a, he's just, he's like a hero. He's like one of our icons. He's like one of our guys, right? When you're in New England, you don't really have many people that make it. Um, and so if they do make it, it's usually in motorsports. But again, it's a very small amount of people, you know, we got the Ken Squires and the Dave Moody's. And then, you know, we got uh, Priest and we kind of, we, we claim Joey Logano, but Joey's like kind of like a, we, yeah, he's a hybrid. We claim Corey LaJoy, but he's kind of like a hybrid too. But, um, you know, it's really cool when those guys make it in. and to be in the Hall of Fame, shout out to, to Mike. And, and I know a lot of guys that work with Mike and uh, especially for the modified side, how important his presence was. And those guys just race forever. You know what I mean? They never stop racing literally until they're not here. So yep. 
Um, you know, to also feel like we lost him too soon because um, he would have kept racing that, you know, that, that I think that sucks um, and is always hard to deal with. But, you know, it's cool to see him in it. We got another New Englander in it. It's, it's badass. Congratulations to him and everyone that helped him out in his career. So, Speaking of not stopping racing forever, Caitlin, Red Farmer, I don't know when he's going to stop. I don't know if he's going to stop, but God love him. He's in his 80s, 90s, and he's still racing at the Talladega Short Track, and now he can add Hall of Fame to his resume. That man is on another level. He really is. We did a big feature on him uh, for Fox Sports, and it was so interesting just hearing all of his stories and just true racer through and through. He's not out there doing it for glory or for anything no. like that. He does it because he truly loves it. And I think it's awesome that a guy like that was recognized for the Hall of Fame honor. Three very deserving drivers, three very unique backgrounds and stories, I would say. Uh, of course, Mike Stefanik that you talked about, uh, Mama, but then the other one, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I mean, all of us know him. I'm sure all of us love him. He is such a good person on and off the track. This larger than life persona, but literally the guy next door. You know, he was always so kind. I felt like and gracious to the media and everything that had been on his plate, on his shoulders throughout his career, he handled it so well and like with such grace and all the things. And I thought that his speech um, was very moving and it was cool to see kind of the resurgence of Junior Nation because I know a lot of us were covering his career uh, yeah. throughout uh, the years and the latter portion of his career and uh, the fan base was just unbelievable around him and it was kind of neat to see him paying homage to them once again and, and reliving some of those those moments with his fans saying how important they were obviously all these years the most important part one of the more important parts of his career so um, I think too of the, that story Mr. H was sharing about the fact that Dale Jr. asked for a million dollars of his salary to be deducted to help his crew members when they're going through an economic recession. Like those are the things you don't know about people until situations like this come up and people yep. share stories about who they are behind the scenes. I think that's just incredible. That's the kind of guy that he was. So I feel honored to even have covered some of his career in the capacity that I did. Uh, but all three of these individuals are, are very deserving and the hall of fame, they do a, a class, world-class act every year putting this together it's a big production i know it's a tremendous amount of work and we had to wait a little while to see these three people go in but yeah um very well done by by the people at the hall of fame as always junior was my uh favorite driver growing up and and i i could never get to the racetrack when i was little i never could get to the racetrack when he would win um yeah i would always go to michigan and i went to michigan like five years in a row and he would either break, crash, or whatever. And the one year I didn't go was the year he won in the bath. Oh, brutal. So was, brutal. So we went to 2014 Daytona 500. I think it was my first 500. And he – it rained, and there was a tornado. Yep. And we debated not going back. Mm -hmm. and I was like, no, like, you, you don't – skip out on you know the fourth quarter of game seven you know you you go back and you know he he won so i never would have let that go if i never if i didn't go back and he won so uh you know i was pretty pumped to finally see and he did the burnout right in front of where i was sitting so it was awesome. i felt like it was making up for the mis so but he he truly changed you know the sport the way it was you know with you know, how popular junior nation was and you know, the, the stats, you know, on his, on his record probably could have been better, um, you know, in the later half of his year, if he didn't get, uh, you know, the concussion and whatnot, but, uh, but still, you know, you know, from off track to on track, you know, definitely deserving of the hall of fame. Man, I wish we had more time. Cause there's so much I want to cover, uh, with both of you guys. Cause Carson, you got your second full-time year at Nice coming up this year with your teammates, Dean Thompson, Chris Wright, Lawless Allen, please give Lawless some crap on his name because I do that every time I Dude, see him. We talk about it all the time, how funny that it. I just can't yeah, stop. Lawless. So real quick story on Lawless. When he made his first K and N start, I was looking at the entry list and I saw Lawless Allen, and I thought that it was flipped. I thought his first name was Allen, his last name was Lawless. So I went up and I introduced myself to him at Sonoma. I'm like, hey, Allen, nice to meet you. And I said <laughs> I called him Allen for like three times. And then on race day, he go, by the way, like my name's Lawless. You know that, right? And I was like, yeah, 
Yeah, I knew that for sure. Well, so please I'll give us my kid. Lost. I will. Uh, I'll call. I'll call him Alan for now on. Please. <laughs> Please do. Uh, so, yeah, you got a big year coming up, Carson, in the trucks. You're leading the brigade over at Nice, going for another playoff run, hopefully make it deep into that postseason. And, Caitlin, not only are you gearing up for a great season, another one at Fox, but your husband, your better half, he's got a lot more on his plate this year as a crew chief in the Cup Series for defending Daytona 500 winner Michael McDowell. So I know things are busy for you in the Vinci household, I'm sure. Yeah, good times over here. It's a uh busy stressful all the things yes. but uh we're looking forward to the new year ahead looking forward to watching you race carson i know mm-hmm. we'll be having you on our shows for the truck series coverage this year so uh we're looking forward to seeing how you do perfect i'll keep it i'll keep it fun off the track for, please for do. you that, that's please great. do magic right there just keep that's doing why it. we love you so we keep you around and mamba you keep doing you keep wearing that hat bud look i'm just gonna keep grinding it out you know how i do baby we're just in it by the way, Mamba, before we go, tell the people a little bit about how you got Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch and all these people to dance, please, <clears throat> at production I just, days. I just want to – I'm going to – you all can thank me now. You're welcome. I, thank you. I, I, I got your favorite drivers, the ones that have no personalities, the ones that don't do anything fun, the guys that you're like, oh, he's kind of an asshole. I got them all to have fun at production day. They were attempting to do the jerk. Um, so if you go onto NASCAR's YouTube, you can see them trying to do that. Worth it was it. pretty, pretty entertaining. Uh, still trying to dance moves or what? Yeah, yeah, no, I was trying to teach them some stuff. They didn't really, not, they had a little hitch in most of the Some steps. were better than others. Some were better than others. Um, also, you can see the the Ryan Blaney, Celine Dion voiceover. That was a whole production. That was great. With, with the that, squad. That um, was the best one of the bunch, though, for sure. Look, so that it was like it was as far it took seven people to put that production together. Like, and we was off the rip. Like, we just did it. Um, but I, I will say the Michael McDowell one probably caught me off guard the most. That was funny, too. I was that like, one, him showing his personality. That he, when he started going in on it, like I, I wasn't planning on being in it, but I got so hyped. I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I got so hyped. So I had to do it. So, That's but awesome. uh, no, I just want, I, I think I'm going to do a lot with stuff like that with socials this year for NASCAR. Uh, if yeah. I'm around, if I'm around you, everyone's a target. So like you might end up on, you know, yeah, everyone's a target. I just want to have fun. I want to show the fun side of our deal. Perfect. Okay. So thank you guys for joining us today. We appreciate your time and a busy time of year because we got everything coming up right around the corner. And we appreciate you for listening to Off the Record. See you next time. Bye.